Welcome back to DBB Live. I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can find me over on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore 313. And today I just want to do a quick recording, sort of recapping Kay Cunningham and Jalen Duran's performance at the Team USA camp in Las Vegas, where from all reports, Kay Cunningham was the standout player. Well, I should say, after watching the scrimmage myself, he was the standout player. And Jalen Durant also had a really, really strong performance in the scrimmage. So the first spot I wanted to start the discussion and the recap was just that the Pistons finally getting some national media attention. Feels like in the past decade, the only time the Pistons outside of the draft the only time the Pistons have gotten some national recognition, it tends to surround, especially in the Troy Weaver era, uh, certain media members clowning Detroit's free agency acquisitions or player acquisitions, drafting centers, trading for centers, signing centers, even stretching centers. And look, I get it. That stuff is funny. We do it to other franchises. But for each of ESPN and The Athletic to have articles come out with titles such as Kay Cunningham, Wow, Steve Kerr, Kerr, that was ESPN's. And then The Athletics, Joe Varden, released a piece saying Cunningham selecting Dominate Team USA in scrimmage. So to have that kind of national media, I guess, praise for the Pistons franchise guy in Cade and Jalen Durant got plenty of love as well. It was, it was really cool. It was really cool for the fans. Uh, even just with this particular young core the Pistons have assembled, I think there's been some praise for the players they've brought into the organization, um, especially in the past couple of drafts um, with the now the core four of Durant, Thompson, Cunningham and Ivy. But it still feels like they've gone under the radar. Um, the Magic made a bit of a jump last season and their young core, understandably, they got some praise. OKC okay, have also made a major leap last season. Um and look, the Pistons won 17 games. I get it. There's not, there's not a lot to talk about there, especially when Cade's out. But um, just to get, see the franchise get some love um, just with their young pieces. Um, I'm going to go through some quotes here, but um, I believe uh, Steve uh, Tim Bontemps basically wrote in his piece that Cade sort of asserted his will on the game. He said, Cunningham gave Team USA fits throughout both scrimmages. He found Duran with a couple of beautiful passes and generally got wherever he wanted. And that's where I want to start um, just with Cade's performance is the thing that really jumped out to me in watching Cade play against the Team USA um, in that scrimmage was just the pace he plays with. And I believe Anthony Edwards actually cited this um, in a post-scrimmage interview. He just said, Cade just plays at his own pace. And I think that's one of his greatest assets as a player. At six foot six is you cannot rush him up. You cannot rush him, sorry. When he's got the ball in hands, it is his pace and his pace only. And some people have wanted him to sort of switch gears up to get to the room a bit more. But the way the mercurial he approach, he sort of attacks offensively is what makes him so special and is what sort of draws those Luca-type comparisons. I don't think Cade will be Luca, And to be honest, I don't think that exact archetype is what Cade is and wants to be, is that ISO-heavy ball-dominant guy. But you see the comparisons. Um, There was a particular play I loved where Cade sort of... Tam USA, they'd thrown all manners of players at Cade, and it got to the point where Mikael Bridges pick Kate up full court and this is the beauty of Kate. He's got those broad shoulders. He sort of just absorbs the pressure from Mikael Bridges. He absorbs it, takes it up the court. And this, like Mikael Bridges is, in my opinion, the best perimeter defender in the league. Some people might want to say Kawhi, but he can't stay healthy. He can't stay on the floor enough. But in terms of just night in, night out, Mikael Bridges is the best perimeter defender in the league. And just to see Kate absorb that full court pressure and then he gets into the lane, draws Paolo Bencaro, which then opens up Jalen Durant for the lob. Yeah, that's the sort of stuff with Cade that's special at the point guard position. And then there's everything else he does. And I'm going to bring up some highlights here from the performance. Uh, but you just see here, ton of pick and roll. His chemistry with Jalen Durant was 
it was really cool to see. Um, but yeah, I think Kate, I documented the stats from the scrimmage. Kate finished with 13 points, six rebounds. Uh, uh, my mistake, 11 points, two rebounds, six assists, and only one turnover. He didn't miss a shot. It was four or four from the field. And it was just a complete performance from Kate. Um, just made the right reads, never rushed, never, ever rushed. That's the one takeaway Piston Sands should be really excited about is this man under pressure is going to make the right decision more times than not here. Takes Jaron Jackson Jr. off the bounce, straight to the cup. And this is the play I was alluding to earlier where he just absorbs the pressure, absorbs the pressure, gets past Mikel, and then just tosses it up for JD. Uh, and look, I'm look, I'm well aware this is just a scrimmage. If it if this was a scrimmage at UCLA with like maybe one other all-star on the court and then fringe NBA players and some college players, I, look, I probably wouldn't be getting this carried away. I probably wouldn't be making this video breaking it down. But that Team USA team's got plenty of talent. They've got, as I've said, Mikael Bridges, Ant Edwards, Brandon Ingram, um, Cam Johnson's no slash defensively, Austin Reeves. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Ant Edwards, but they've also got Tyrese Halliburton, who, look, he's not known for his defensive ability, but he's a gamer. He's going to come out and try. And to see K just assert his dominance was, was really cool. And... The next player we'll get to is obviously Jalen Duran. And I think the thing that stood out for me uh, from Jalen Duran's point of view is just how easily he's adapted to playing alongside Cade. Um, Brandon Ingram said uh, after the scrimmage, from what I saw, the kid Jalen Duran and Cade Cunningham, they had really good chemistry. And he was spot on. He, the Cade Jalen pick and roll was giving Team USA fits. And you're going to see here in some of uh, Jalen's highlights that it just there's not much you can do. I know Tim USA are probably lacking a true, true center. So maybe that's why he sort of flourished a little bit more than he might have if Tim USA had more of a true big. Jaron Jackson's one of the best defensive bigs, but um, yeah, there wasn't that much else in terms of the big men that he had to go against. Um, but it's still impressive. Jalen finished with 13 points, six rebounds, one assist, and one block. And he was five or seven from the field, which I believe all five were assisted from Cade. So, um, and three or five from the free throw line, which I thought was notable as well. Continues to show some progression there. Um, the stroke, as you can see, looks pretty, pretty fluid. Um, and yeah, and here's a nice defensive stop. He switched on to Mikael Bridges, holds him accountable, and then Cam Johnson ends up traveling in the corner. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to touch on with Jalen was just. Made some really nice passing reads. He didn't get really get rewarded with the assists, but that pick and roll of him and Kate is going to be so dynamic for years to come because there's so much versatility there in the sense of Cade's going to keep you accountable. He's going to keep the big man. If you play drop coverage, the big man's going to have to stay with Cade to a certain extent because he's got the mid-range. He can get to the rim. And you know the second he sees the opening in the defense, he's going to find that role man. So... It was, it's impressive. And then if Cade gets it to Jalen and they defend the pick and roll well, Jalen can make that read. He can hit the opposite corner for the three. He's definitely, one of the things that impresses me with Jalen on the roll is just his patience. He's, for a big man who's athletic and sort of has probably dunked everything for a lot of their life, he sort of just has that um, knack or just awareness to sort of on the roll, not rush every shot will not be scared of getting fouled. Um, he'll he'll take it. He'll take a dribble to steady himself and then make the pass. If he hasn't already like premeditated the pass and seen it unfold in front of him, he's going to make the right decision more times than not, which is really really um, is really going really to help and make Detroit harder to defend in the pick and roll because you have a big man who's going to be able to find Boyan Bogdanovich and Juan Connor or Joe Harris. Or Monte Morris, whoever these veteran shooters are, Alec Burks, um, he can make that pass. Which, look, he's he's still only nineteen. I think Jalen's still going to have another two seasons of genuine development. You're going to see the flashes, but um, yeah, it's exciting. And I think that's really all that's that came out of the scrimmage. I just want to know. Some people are going to say, Jack, just the scrimmage, chill out, but. Um, I get that to an extent, but in a Team USA setting where 
I think, um, look, Steve Kerr also noted that it's somewhat of a tradition or it's, it's common for the select team to beat the Team USA team in their first scrimmage because Team USA don't have that chemistry and they're still trying to figure out the rotation. I get that. That's fair. But those guys, Team USA, they got pride. They wouldn't want to lose to select team. And if you watch that full scrimmage, there was bodies on the floor. Multiple times there was three to four bodies on the floor. They were going out. They were trying to win. Um, so to have the Pistons young guys come out of that as the best-looking players in that particular game, that's really cool. That counts for something. That's not nothing. That counts for something. And Pistons fans rightfully should be excited by that. And I think the league as a whole sort of, at least yesterday, took time to realize that, hey, the Pistons have a young core and they might not be playoffs next season, but they're definitely on the right track. There's definitely, definitely plenty to be hopeful for. So um, I know the offseason may have been a little bit underwhelming, but I've always thought once we start to see this team on the court, the hope and the excitement will come back. And I think that's sort of what this Team USA scrimmage was for fans. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting. And... Pistons fans should be counting down the days to October. I know I am. And in terms of upcoming content, um, I'm going to keep trying to do some of these reaction videos as sort of more content comes out of Team USA or if there's a trade. Uh, if there's anything you want me to discuss, you think's worth discussing with these short forms, let me know in the comments. Um, if you could like and subscribe, that would be in the world. That keeps this going for Wes and I and Detroit Bad Boys as a whole. Um, Wes and I will be back for our normal DBB live stream on Friday night next week from 8 p.m. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, like, subscribe would mean the world. Um, if you want to go watch the full scrimmage, I believe Ball is Life have it up potentially. Um, the place I watched it from, Hoop Jab on YouTube, uh, seem to have made it private. So um, if not, I've got highlights of Cade and Jalen's individual play just on my Twitter. So go check those out if you want to go watch that. And that's it from me. Once again, thanks for watching. Appreciate the support and go Pistons. Peace.